This is Kathleen Hewer from KathleenHewer.com. Today we'll be looking at part three of my three-part case study, the case of the pretty pink purse. We're measuring the fallout. If you'd like to read the first two parts, you can do so at the links below. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the case, I'll give you a quick recap. In a local closed Facebook group, a seller advertises her designer purse for sale. Another member of the group does a little online shopping and manages to find the same item listed for significantly less elsewhere. That's when things start to go downhill. The seller makes a series of poor choices and it ultimately results in an epic social media meltdown. Shortly afterward, another group member dubbed the incident Pursegate, and that's the term I'll be using to refer to the incident today. Let's take a look at the survey I created not long after the event went down. On the day of the event, the group had over 4,000 members, nearly 5,000. Of those members, 175 of them responded to the survey. That comes out to about 3.6% of the total group membership. Keep in mind that the people who decided to respond to the survey were probably people who had seen most of what happened, and they were probably people that cared the most about it. So the results may be skewed a little bit that way. The survey was made up of three questions, and it was delivered via surveymonkey.com. Let's take a look at the survey itself. Question one, were you witness to Persgate on Thursday, February 6, 2014? Two, as a result of Persgate, are you more or less likely to purchase products or services from the seller in question? And number three, if Persgate changed the likelihood of purchasing from the seller, what comment, question, or overall vibe changed your mind? Question one, were you a witness to Persgate? Yes, I watched the whole thing unfold live. Yes, I saw a lot of it as it happened. I saw some, but not the whole thing. I saw something about it, but not much, or I missed it. As you can see from the chart here, 29% of it saw the whole thing, 27% of the respondents saw most of it, 31% saw some of it, but missed some of it, 7% saw something, but not much, and of the entire group, 7% of it missed the entire thing. Question two, as a result of Persgate, are you more or less likely to purchase products or services from the seller in question? Here were the choices. More likely, less likely, about the same, or I was never a prospective customer. And then I also asked an open-ended question, asking people to explain their choice. As you can see here, 125 people, or two-thirds, identified themselves as not a prospective customer at all. 33% or 57 people did identify themselves as possible customers of the seller in question. Of the prospective customers, you can see in this chart, 72% of the respondents identified themselves as less likely to purchase products or services from the seller. 28% of them were just as likely. That translates to 41 people who are now less likely to purchase from the seller and only 16 people who are just as likely to purchase from the seller. Now, you might notice in this chart, there's not much yellow. There's a reason for that. The number of people more likely to purchase from the seller after witnessing what happened, zero. All things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. This is especially important with people doing business online because often buyers don't personally know the sellers that they're purchasing from over the internet. So it's important that internet marketers take the time to make their prospective customers know them, like them, and trust them. So let's look at some of the reasons why the respondents felt the way they did. Since she misrepresented the purse she was selling, claiming it to be a different and more expensive version than it actually is, I would be very hesitant to buy anything from her, knowing she lied about that. The seller has always been off for me due to her advertising techniques. She's become more and more aggressive, 
and I don't usually buy from aggressive sellers anyhow. I don't trust them in any field of business. Another member wrote, Her constant posting is annoying. I know full well that I can keep scrolling, but that doesn't change the fact that I always see it. Furthermore, never once would I threaten to sue. She behaved inappropriately. A couple of people, though, came out to support the seller. I did try to go to the Etsy store, which I've never done before. Another person insisted that they would continue to be a customer. Question 3. If Persgate changed the likelihood of purchasing from the seller, what comment, question, or overall vibe changed your mind? One person replied, the fact that she clearly lied about what price the purses were going for online. If she's dishonest about that, how can I trust anything she says? Someone else said, I did not like her attacks on the group. I was inclined to believe the person who was telling us about the factory difference. Someone else? The bickering. As they say, the customer is always right. Don't argue, keep your mouth shut, and interested people will come along. Definitely the defensive attitude of the seller, and the lashing out that followed. It made her seem more guilty, and made me question her ability to handle any potential issues that can sometimes arise when you're buying any product. Another group member said, I didn't like how she kept on posting. It made her look childish and I'm sure it may have turned some possible customers away. She did not need to keep the drama going. Another member said, she needs to watch her comments and posts. In my opinion, she's a small business owner and should conduct herself in a personal, professional manner so fights over petty things don't get blown out of proportion. Yet another member replied, I would not consider buying something from someone like that. It's completely inappropriate to respond rudely to people on a public forum. How do I know what they're going to say about me? It's better to ignore the negative and apologize for any misunderstanding than to cause drama. Just bite your tongue and move on. It's not about the purse, this person said. It was about how unprofessional she acted. Not much care for her customers who felt they were cheated. The fact that after the purse gate incident, she actually posted more things for sale? She should have let it fizzle down, but it was like she was taunting the ones annoyed the most by her post. Other people were turned off by the threat of legal action. What changed your mind? The part where slander and sue you were used. Something along the lines of, is there an attorney that works with small businesses? On the exact same forum that the people she was threatening to sue use. Were they supposed to go running at the threat? The seller also had her supporters. I don't hate on someone trying to make a buck. I feel she was attacked and lost her cool. I would give her a chance to explain her actions, though, and let that determine if I would buy from her. It's a free market. Do I agree with the seller? No. Do others, including companies, buy and try to resell at a large profit? Absolutely. And perhaps the most wise piece of advice... You admins need a life. Maybe there's something to that. Thanks for watching. My name is Kathleen Hewer, and I do digital marketing. If you have any questions about digital marketing or social media, go ahead and let me know. You can email me anytime at Kathleen at KathleenHewer.com or tweet me at Kathleen Hewer. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe.